guys, today's video is going to be a q and I had a few people on Instagram ask me some questions, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer them. Okay, first one is from Ono Louise. What are your favourite three things about yourself? You've got so much to give. Okay, first of all, that was really sweet. Thank you. Um, oh, three, my three favourite things about myself. Okay, the first thing is probably my honesty. Um, I'm an open book. With me telling my story about what I've been through, my struggles, um, my ups and my downs, hopefully someone relates to that and it helps them in some kind of way. I just want people to know that they're not alone. I'm here if they need support. I'm here to offer my advice if they want to take it. When I was going through some stuff when I was younger, I, I literally didn't know that these things even existed and I thought I was really weird for feeling this way or that I was alone. And if I can just help one person, then my job's done. I think the second thing um, is, I mean this could be a pro or a con, but um, how stubborn I am. I'm very, very, very stubborn and I get it from my dad. If someone tells me I can't do something, yes, yes I can. I will do anything in my power to prove to that person that I, I can do that. Um, I think it's kind of a fear of failing, but I'm going to put a positive spin on it and just say it's stubbornness. If I hold a very, very strong view on something, I will let that person know. And it's not like I wouldn't listen to other people's opinions or views, like, I love that, I, that's how you learn. But if I'm very, very passionate about something, I will stop at nothing to let them know. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but I'm going to take it as a good thing. Okay, and the third thing... Uh, I like how short I am. I'm five foot one and I've always been really small. I've always been the smallest in my class in dance stuff. And I always wish I was taller, but... No, I really like being small. I feel like I would be weird if... I was taught like it would not suit me. Um, so yeah, just learning to embrace the shortness. Okay, next question is from Jordan X Lou. Which musical is your favourite? Okay, um, that's probably the hardest question in the world. Um, I can't just pick one. Okay, I think my all-time favourite that's been consistently on the top of the list for a while is Spring Awakening. I saw that, I was probably about 10, um, and that musical has stuck with me. The music is absolutely beautiful. The acting was just phenomenal when I went to see it. Um, Billy Elliot, because that was my dream. I always wanted to be in Billy. Um, I auditioned for it for like four years in a row, and every single time I got down to the last round. And if anyone knows me, knows that I kicked myself every single time and I've seen it eight times and every single time it's just stunning. I remember watching it, my friend was in it um, and that night was Leighton Williams and I was like what, who is this guy? Um, like, it's the talent in that show is amazing. Um, so yeah that's up there. Um, title of show, I haven't actually seen it. I've seen some clips online um, but the concept of writing a musical about writing a musical love it. If then, I really like if then, Ghost. I always cry watching Ghost. Um, I'm gonna have to look on Spotify because, I mean, I just have so many. Carrie, I loved that show. Um, Ragtime. Oh my god, there's so many. Um, Waitress. I know that's a very generic one, but um, yeah, I saw that about three months ago um, with Catherine McPhee and I just don't understand how she's human. Parade. Oh my god, there's so many. The camera just shut off, so I have no idea where I got up to. Um, but overall, I'm just going to have to say Spring Awakening, Sound of Music. Although I did kind of get tired of singing the songs all the time. Um, but it holds a really dear place in my heart and some of the best memories ever. Billy. I'm just going to say those three for now. Although there are tons and tons more. Okay, next question. Liv Foster Brown. Hi Liv. Um, what's the next step for you? New job, travelling, moving in the van, continuing with life now. Um, to be honest, I don't have a clue. Um, new job. Well, I'm signed off at the minute. Um, and I don't think I'm well enough to go back to work just yet. Um, 
yeah, I'd like to get back into work. I was I was working with my um, employment specialist at the psychiatrist, and she'd suggested courses for me. Um, so I'm looking into courses at the minute um, for French, environmental studies. Um, yeah, I think they're my top two at the minute, but not a job yet. Um, Travelling. I mean, that's the dream, right? Everyone wants to travel. Without a job, I don't have money. Without money, I can't travel. Um, but yeah, I. If I had the money, I would literally leave tomorrow. I would backpack to Southeast Asia and stay there for six months. Moving in van. Um, there's a problem there. I can't drive. So once I get my license, 100%. Because um, that will tick the travelling box as well. I mean, I've been staying in the van. I sleep in there sometimes and I spend most of my day in there. Um, but it's not completely finished yet. It's um, There's still some work to do. Um, continuing with life now. Yeah, I'm just... I'm pretty much just trying to get by, day by day. Um, I've definitely made so much progress since... Um, well, every day I'm making progress, but yeah, I think for right now um, and the near future, I'm just going to be working on me and my recovery um, and then see where life takes me after that. Um, but yeah, definitely travelling is on the agenda and the van. Okay, and the last question is from M's Rocky Road. Do you believe full recovery is possible? Ooh, um, no, I don't. Um, I think you can get through something and I think you can recover from something but there's always going to be that thing there at the back of your mind niggling at you. Um, I'd like to believe that that was the case, that things can just completely go away but no. I know your question meant like mental health, eating disorder, addiction but if you think about I mean, I've injured pretty much everything on my body. Once you've injured something, there's a weakness there and it never fully restores itself. Like, it gets better, you can walk on it, you can move it, and that's great. But there's still going to be that weakness there. And I think it's the same with addiction and things like that. Like, I was sober for almost two years. I never thought I'd touch a drop of alcohol again. I was just like, no, it's fine, I'm recovered. Like, it doesn't affect me anymore. And I had thoughts about it. I'd be in certain situations where people would be drinking, or I'd be going through something and have an urge to just grab a bottle and drown myself in my sorrows um but yeah I never thought that I would drink again and I'm now like a month sober um and I'd like to believe I wouldn't touch alcohol again but is that realistic probably not I probably not that I want to but I probably will go back to it same with eating disorders like I had bulimia I haven't binged and purged in ages but I still have those thoughts there. I still look at a plate and think like, whoa, okay. Not all the time, but you know, you have that that problem. It's, it's, it's always going to be at the back of your mind. And like if I've overindulged on something, there's often a thought of, I need to get this out of my system. Like that's disgusting and I've ate too much. But I haven't engaged in that behaviour in a while, but it doesn't mean it's not still there. I read my friend's script actually um, a few days ago. I should probably ring her and ask if I'm allowed to use it. Okay, she's not answering. Um, I'll just use it and hope for the best. Also, I need to shut these curtains. I'm trying to use natural light to not use electric and studio lights, but I mean, windows. So basically, my friend wrote a play called Sad About the Cows, um, and it's about this girl's journey with an eating disorder, and she refers to her eating disorder as Anna. Um, and I just wanted to share with you um, a little snippet of it because when I read it it really resonated with me and probably answers this question more eloquently than I did. Um, I can't help but think that, oh I felt really nervous then, I felt like I was doing a monologue. Um, I can't help but think that saying goodbye isn't the end. Has anyone here said goodbye but relapsed? I want to feel stronger but I miss it. Maybe she never truly goes away. So how do I keep control now to make this new job work to not let people down? As much as people know and people are looking out for signs, will I ever not be grieving the loss of Anna? Anna, the best, most ruthless friend you've ever had. She told me when I was ugly, she told me when I could do better. She told me when I needed to work harder. My biggest cheerleader was also my worst enemy. That really got to me, like, the, the person that's telling you to do this in your head is also the person that's tearing you down. 
um, your worst enemy, however you see her and whatever you call her. Anna who tore me down one inch at a time until I could wrap my two hands comfortably around each thigh and try to crush them smaller. Anna who got me told off in dance class for curling my shoulders in because I wanted to be the tiniest in class. Anna who made me pull a tape measure tight around my waist every day until I squeezed all of the happiness out of myself. And with every measurement, I could see me shrinking smaller. I don't want to be small anymore. I don't want to be drowned in clothes, in public spaces, in shadows. I want to be noticed and I want to work at my dream career. I can't carry on depriving my body if I want this. It's one or the other. Anna kicked and screamed, but I pushed her to the back of my mind. That's willpower? Like, that is deep. Um, when I read that, I was like, okay, wow, that resonated with me so much. Like, it's always going to be at the back of your mind, no matter how much you work on it. Like, you can push it away and push it away and learn to deal with it being back here. But it's going to creep forward. It's going to keep making its way way in and you've got to learn to just push it behind. But it's, it's never, it never goes away. Also, if you want to go see the play, I believe it's an hour. Um, it's on the 21st to 25th of May at Tristan Bates Theatre and it starts at 6.15. I would highly recommend you go see it. I will say though, if you struggle with eating disorders or have in the past, um, it can be a bit triggering. That was all the questions I had. If you have any other questions, I might do a part two. I hope you've all had an amazing day and enjoyed the sunshine, which is very rare in England. Um, and buddy, you're cute. Bye.